Instead of making everything from scratch, create systems that you can reuse in future projects. Movement systems, inventory, interaction systems. This saves time and helps your skills stack over time. If you're stuck on ideas, don't overthink it. One of the best places to get inspiration is short films on YouTube. For example, I want to create a horror game, so I'm going to search for horror short films. And all of these are really good to take inspiration from. When I struggle with ideas, this tends to help me out tremendously. Once you have your idea, we need mechanics and objectives the part that makes the gameplay feel more immersive look for games in similar genres as they can help provide insights for your own game check this out these three games are similar but i'm going to take one mechanic from each game and make it my own before we make a project we need a place to organize our progress and that is where trello comes in with trello game discs can organize tasks track progress and collaborate in real time and the best part is when you sign up you're introduced with a short and easy tutorial and no not sponsored with that other the way we can start by creating the project once the project has been created i highly recommend organizing your folders start by creating this core folder and in this folder we will have these main folders data and blueprints in the data folder you will store all of these folders and in the blueprints folder you will store all of these folders you can also change the color of the folders to stay a bit more organized by right clicking and set color and now it's time to make the levels when making levels it is always good to make multiple levels level one your game level two animation decals assets and level three your puzzles and mechanics keep it separated to stay more organized and structure your game properly not to start building the map before we continue ask yourself what emotions should the player feel where do you want the player to look and where do you want them to go without telling them because everything should be placed with purpose take a look at this which gets your attention more option a or option b if you say a then you're a fool option b is way more interesting and actually makes the player curious when building your level it is usually better to tell a story through the environment. In this clip, we can immediately tell that some kind of catastrophic event happens, and at the same time, it naturally guides the player to crawl through the vent. There's a trap that a lot of game developers fall into, and I was stuck in it for a long time. Project hopping. I'd start a new project full of excitement, but as soon as the work got hard, I'd move on to the next idea. Not because the project was bad, but because finishing it seemed almost impossible. Project hopping feels like progress. You're always building, always experimenting, but nothing ever gets finished. Every game reaches a point where motivation fade. That moment isn't a sign to quit, it's the moment where real development begins. When developing a game, I highly recommend to not think about making the whole game. Start by finishing the first level, and then just add on new levels from there, and eventually you will have a fully published game ready to be uploaded to Steam. Now let's talk about practices. Practice number one, analyze games instead of just playing them. Ask yourself, where does my eye go first? Do I feel safe, tense, curious? Where does the game want me to go? Practice number two, storytelling. A good storytelling has logic. Ask yourself, what caused this, what changed because of it, and what does this mean for the player? Players don't remember props, they remember how a space made them feel. So when creating a story, don't start by asking what happened here, start by asking more important questions. How do I want the player to feel while they're here? Because once you decide the emotion, curiosity, unease, dread, or relief, every decision becomes much more clear. Practice number three, it's not all about visuals, you can give emotion with sound design. Now how do we achieve great sound design? Every sound in a game should have purpose. If it doesn't guide the player, build tension, or reinforce the story, it doesn't belong. When I place a sound, I'm not asking, does this sound cool? I'm asking, what is this sound doing? Is it guiding the player forward? Is it pulling their eyes towards something important? These are the questions you should be asking yourself. Practice number 5. To build better environments, start small. Instead of trying to create an entire level, focus on contained spaces first. For example, a bedroom, janitor's closet, a classroom. Small environments force you to think about composition scale and detail. They teach you how to guide the player's eye, how to tell a story with props, and how to make a space feel believable. And over time, you will gain more confidence, because once you make a single room feel interesting, building a full level stops feeling impossible. If you guys want more videos like this, or want a tutorial on anything explained, drop a like or let me know in the comments. Until then, see you in the next one.